Hello everyone and welcome back to part three of our Star Trek time travel series. Today we'll be covering the show Enterprise in particular, which between the Temporal Cold War and other typical Star Trek time travel shenanigans, we have lots of examples to cover. We start off in the very first episode, Broken Bow, where we see an individual from the 28th century communicating with the Sulaban and their leader, Silik, who he has tasked with, in this case, destabilizing the Klingon Empire. We eventually learn that the future guy here is unable to physically travel through time, but can only transmit messages which is why he has the Suleiman doing his bidding in exchange for advanced technology. We also find out in this episode that Future Guy and the Suleiman are part of a conflict called the Temporal Cold War. In the episode of Cold Front, Suleiman, uh, the Suleiman leader, Silik, shows up on Enterprise, having been sent there by Future Guy. And the crew also meet Daniels, who is apparently a temporal agent from the 31st century, working to preserve the timeline from the different factions of the Temporal Cold War. This brings us to the end of Season 1 and the beginning of Season 2, in which case Silic is given the task of causing an explosion in the colony and framing Enterprise so that their mission will be cancelled. Also, the Sulawan are sent to capture Archer. In order to protect him, Daniels transports Archer to the 31st century. However, it turns out that removing Archer from the timeline had disastrous effects, and Earth has apparently been destroyed by the 31st century. However, in part two, Daniels and Archer are able to jury rig some technology, and eventually Archer is transferred back to his own 22nd century. And the timeline is preserved, at least for the time being. In the episode Future Tense, the Enterprise discovers a time pod in deep space with a, with a deceased pilot who appears to be human. However, they don't recognize this technology. Eventually, they learn that this time pod is also from the 31st century, having traveled back in time with a temporal displacement drive. The Suleban and the Tholians are also interested in this tech. However, Commander Tucker activates a piece of equipment from the ship, and the ship and all its accessories promptly disappear. The Temporal Cold War heats up again in The Expanse, which is the finale of Season 2. A Zindi surprise attack that causes millions of casualties on Earth. And Future Guy reaches out to Archer, explaining that this Zindi attack was motivated by another faction in the Temporal Cold War, and that Archer can find the Zindi in the Delphic Expanse. While in the Expanse and trying to stop the Zindi weapon that is intended to destroy Earth, Captain Archer is infected with a type of interspatial parasites that make him unable to form new long-term memories. In this version of the timeline, Enterprise is unsuccessful in stopping the Zindi and their weapon destroys Earth. The remnants of humanity seek shelter on City Alpha 5. Also, Dr. Phlox discovers that if they eliminate the parasites in the present, they will also disappear in the past, as if they had never existed. They manage to do this just in the nick of time, and Archer effectively time travels back in time to the time period of the accident, and the, the timeline proceeds in a different manner. Back to a more direct conflict in the Cold War. Daniels informs the crew that 
a group of Zindi are in early 21st century Earth. He therefore sends Archer and Paul back in time to stop them. It turns out that a group of Zindi reptilians are attempting to engineer a virus to wipe out humanity as a backup in case their weapon does not work. Of course, our intrepid heroes manage to stop them. Back in the 22nd century, before Archer is going to go on an apparent suicide mission to stop the Zindi weapon, Daniels transports him to the 26th century in order to convince him not to risk his life on this mission. In particular, he shows the defeat of the Sphere Builders by the Federation. He then explains that if Archer loses his life, the Federation will never come into existence and therefore will not be present to stop these sphere builders from taking over the galaxy. In the episode E Squared, on their way to a meeting with a sympathetic Zindi named Degra, Enterprise encounters another version of itself. Apparently this Enterprise, on their way through a subspace corridor, an interaction with their impulse manifold threw them back over a hundred years into the past. Unable to return to their time, they spent this time period as a generational ship, waiting to catch up with their original time so that they can stop the Zindi from attacking Earth. But eventually the two ships work together for our quote-unquote enterprise to reach its rendezvous on time. Similar to Azadi Prime, Archer once again tries to, excuse me, Daniels once again tries to prevent Archer from risking his life in the episode Zero Hour, this time before the final assault on the Zindi weapon. Daniels brings Archer several years into the future and shows him the foundation of the Federation, which he explains will not take place if Archer dies. Finally, in Stormfront, the first two episodes of Season 4, Daniels has transported Enterprise back to World War II, where another temporal Cold War faction, the Nakul, have changed history by allying with the Germans, which among other things has allowed them to take over the eastern portion of the United States. The Nakul are trying to build a temporal conduit to return to their time period. However, the Enterprise defeats them and this apparently resets the timeline, bringing the Temporal Cold War to an end. And with that, the end of the many time travel escapades of the Annex-01 crew. And that brings us up to date on time travel and Star Trek to this point. However, there's no need to worry about these kinds of things in real life, since after all, the Vulcan Science Directorate has determined that time travel is impossible. Now, apparently in Season 2 of The Car, there are going to be more time travel adventures. And in the meantime, however, there has been no time travel so far in Lower Decks, at least through the end of Season 2. So that concludes our overview of time travel in Star Trek. Thank you for joining me in this series, and I hope you have a blessed day.